Hello, baseball fans. Chris Terrell here with RotorPearls.com to bring you my daily fantasy baseball core plays for Monday, August 19th. Before jumping into the slate itself, if you're not a RotorPearls member yet, make sure to get over to RotorPearls.com. Get your free trial today. We've got a three-day trial for weekly member memberships. We've got a five-day trial for monthly and yearly memberships as well. And if you use promo code MLB today, you will get 50% off your first purchase after your trial uh, is out. We cover MLB, NHL, PGA, NASCAR, NBA, um, pretty much all the sports. We do one-on-one -on -one coaching. That's kind of our biggest thing there in our Slack chat. Come over today. Check out what we got. Uh, I'm pretty sure you're going to be happy. You're going to stick around. Um, we've, we've been having an excellent baseball season. We're going to close strong here, um, working our way into NFL season, which is only two weeks away. Week three of the preseason is this week. Probably see some starters go. Um, and we're going to have some content up for that uh, later in the week as the games get closer. And then uh, moving into uh, regular season, we're going to have videos during the week too. So make sure to uh, um, subscribe to our channel here and set your notifications because we've got a lot of stuff coming down the line, including some, I'm going to be doing some strategy videos as well for NHL, uh, PGA as we jump into uh, the new season, which will be starting here in about three weeks. And then NASCAR, I'm going to be doing some as well as the season comes to a close, but it'll be pertinent going into next year. And then uh, NBA as well, just kind of some overview stuff, uh, looking at my cheat sheets and stuff that I provide. All right. With that, let's jump into uh, tonight's slate. So we've got nine games. A little bit odd of a slate when you're really comparing pitching price in between the two sites, and we'll just jump into that here right now and have a look at that. So what you'll see is a lot of good pitchers on DraftKings are priced in the elite tier, like we see Marco Gonzalez, Wade Miley, Kyle Gibson, even Trevor Bauer is up near that 12 $12,000 range on DraftKings, which seems a little crazy. He has not been great um, since going over to Cincinnati. So what I'm kind of looking at is going the cheap route. It's really worked a lot lately. It allows you to get those bats over on FanDuel last night, uh, yesterday's main slate, sorry. I used uh, Pannoni there, um, the, the long reliever for Toronto, and it ended up, he didn't work out himself. He only put up eight FanDuel points, but it allowed me to put together a Boston stack, uh, Devers, Betts, uh, Bogarts and JD Martinez, which went off and ca ended up not cashing big just because of the pitching thing, but uh, easily min cashing in all uh, single entries and three max contests over there in FanDuel. So I really like the the cheap pitching, get into these bats with all the offense that we've seen this season. So that's kind of where I'm going to concentrate um, on tonight. Kyle Gibson is my number one pitcher overall. I will consider him on. Even on DraftKings as the top guy, he comes in as a minus 200 favorite tonight facing Chicago. And just one thing that I was really looking at, you know, comparing Wade Miley, who's a minus 420 favorite, huge for Houston, is you compare the two pitchers, Miley and Gibson. First of all, Gibson is cheaper. Second of all, he's got a higher K rate, a lower XFIP lower swinging, or sorry, higher swinging strike rate, and very comparable uh, matchups as well. Chicago is an 81 WRC plus versus righties, 26% K rate. Going up at Miley, he's facing the Tigers. The Tigers are an 86 WRC plus against lefties with a 25.5% K rate. So to me, uh, Gibson checks all the boxes, so I'm kind of going to leave Miley out, uh, probably, as of right now at least, um, out of my player pool, at least for cash games. Gibson is my number one guy, especially over there on FanDuel. He's only 7,400 in FanDuel, which is going to get you, I think, Pannoni yesterday was 6,300 or 6,500, so not that much more. We're going to be able to get some bats, and there are some bats in great situations tonight that we're going to want to target. So definitely going cheap there, Gibson number one. I think we can pivot off Gibson um, for GPPs, definitely. Zach Gallon is going to be one that I will be looking at uh, pivoting off of on both sites. He's, he's a little bit cheaper. $800 cheaper on DraftKings. He's $600 more on FanDuel, which I think is really going to keep him low-owned. The park isn't great, but he's a minus 170 favorite. He has been excellent. Um, he started out with Miami earlier in the year. He really stood out. He never gave up more than three earned runs. Um, and it looks like about seven starts. He only gave up three earned runs once. And now that he's been with Arizona, he's faced Philly at home. Uh, he went five innings, struck out six. He had some trouble in Colorado. He gave up nine hits, but only two earned runs, but he ended up only going four innings there um, just because of those hits, some extended innings, and his pitch count kind of got up there. So 
I like going back to him tonight facing Colorado again, but this time it's obviously going to be at home. Um, Colorado is not nearly as good, obviously, away from Coors, so I definitely like that. And then we look at Gallon's K upside. He's got 27.4% K rate, which is second on this slate behind Trevor Bauer just by 0.2%. Almost a 13% swing in strike rate, which is really good. Obviously, there's some aggression companies running a little hot on the ERA, um, almost two runs higher with the XFIP. But again, um, he's got that K upside, and I think he makes... I'm not going to trust him in cash games by any means, but if we're making a GPP pivot, I love going um, to someone who's obviously going to be lower owned, and he's got a higher K rate than Gibson as well. Looking at the matchup, um, Colorado's got you know a higher WOBA against righties, but their WRC plus weighted runs created, which is um, park adjusted, that, that's what the plus means at the end of the WRC there, is only 84 um, 23% strikeout rate. They have been a lot better lately, but like I said, this is a GPP pivot. This isn't a guy that we're going to be trusting in cash. He's going to be low owned. He's got K upside. Um, I think a lot of people with that, you know, the high total facing Colorado who just got to him in his last start and Gibson's price, he's going to be uh, at least half the ownership of Gibson tonight. So that's where I'm going to go with my GPP pivot off Gibson. And then a couple pitchers I'm looking at kind of in the low range more than anything is Brendan McKay. He's one pitcher who didn't get quite, I thought he would be in the 8,500 to 9,000 range on DraftKings, just the way the other pitchers were really boosted up with, you know, relative to the slate. But he's only 7,500, so he's going to be my top starting pitcher two tonight. Um, you're looking for about 15 to 16 points from him somewhere in there. He's a minus 180 favorite, lowest total on the slate, great pitcher's park, so he's got all that going for him. He's got an XFIP that is a run lower than his ERA, so he's kind of running bad, I guess you could say, a little bit unlucky maybe on the ERA. Got some regression to the positive regression to the mean coming there. He is tied with Zach Gallon with the second highest K rate on the slate at 27.4%. 12.2% swing and strike rate backs that up. He's not walking a lot of guys, as you can see, only 6% there. He give, does give up fly balls, which can lead to trouble, over 40% hard contact. Um, but his, you know, looking at his ex-WOBA compared to his WOBA, it's uh, almost 30 points lower. Um, a little over 60 points lower on the X slug versus the slugging percentage, so definitely okay there. Seattle's been um, above average versus lefties this season, 111 WRC plus, kind of a little bit scary there, um, but they do strike out, so that does match up with his K stuff. They're 25.5% against lefties. Um, I don't love it, but I don't really see any other pitcher kind of down here for an SP2. I will take that K upside, 7,500, um, hoping for 15 points kind of as a floor from him. I think he can get up there around 20, so he does have some upside. And then Joe Ross, I mean, if you're looking to maybe, you know, I wish he was a lot lower priced. Uh, I will consider him an SP2 on DraftKings as well, under 7K, looking for about 14, 13 to 15 points in there as well. I think McKay is definitely the better choice. I think he's going to be the chalk just because, I mean, you look at 9% more, uh, you know, when looking at the K rate, he strikes out 9% more batters. And Ross does walk guys there. So it's it's more of a GPP pivot off McKay, who's probably going to be chalk on DraftKings. So that's definitely the way I'm looking at the pitching. Um, Kyle Gibson, my top guy, I will pivot for GPPs to Zach Gallon, And then my starting pitcher, too on DraftKings, and I will use him as GPP as well on FanDuel, uh, Brendan McKay. Uh, I don't think he's going to be near as high owned with Kyle Gibson, $100 less there, so I think he makes a good pivot on draft or on FanDuel as well for GPP. And then Joe Ross just kind of as a uh, starting pitcher to GPP pivot on DraftKings. All right, so we talked about pitchers, so let's go across now. I uh, talked about cheap pitching. Uh, the reason why is because there's some offenses in great spots tonight. Start with Houston. They top the implied run ranks tonight, 6.73. They're facing Edwin Jackson. He's been a little bit better lately, actually, since he's uh, jumped on with Detroit. Only two and one earned runs. I'm just not buying it. Uh, he's not that great of a, of a pitcher overall. He's been, I think this is, what, his 15th team, something like that. You know, going and com combining his Toronto numbers in there, which... It's you know it's been a while since he's been there starting. He didn't hasn't started for Toronto since the start of June, but he comes in with an 8.62 ERA, 5.84 xFIP is probably a little bit more representative of the kind of pitcher he is, which still isn't great. He walks guys, um, he can get into trouble that way, and he does give up the home run, 
while he's only given up three earned runs, they've all come via homer um, in those last two starts for Detroit. He's faced Kansas City and Seattle, and I wouldn't say those are scary offenses by any means. Just talk about Seattle a little bit, um, but they're better against lefties. So now he's facing Houston, who is a top three offense in the entire league. So I will definitely be looking at a bunch of different Houston combinations tonight at the top, um, you know, starting with like Springer, Altuve, Brantley, Bragman. That's going to be expensive. You're really going to have to go low in your pitching to make that work. But then you got uh, Jordan Alvarez, Correa, Gurriel um, down there at the bottom, even Josh Reddick if you're looking for a punt, if, you know, if you are paying up for, for pitching. He's going to hit down in the order, but uh, if you want to maybe – Go Springer, Altuve, getting Reddick there at the bottom of the order, going 9-1-2, something like that with a wraparound. I definitely like for Houston. Second favorite offense um, tonight, Arizona, 5.6 runs. Way better park than Houston, so I get a little bit of an upgrade there. They've only been about league average lately, but as you can see, the last seven days, they've had a boost, 122 or WRC+, plus, 281 ISO, so they're, they're um, getting some power as well. They've actually been better on the road this season. Um, but uh, they're facing Chichi Gonzalez, 657 ERA, 552 XFIP, and what stands out just like Edwin Jackson is that whip, um, 1.8 whip, um, walks and hits per inning pitched, anything over like 1.2, you're giving teams a ton of opportunities to score runs, and you know, his game logs, he's given up 5, 2, 3, 2, 3, and 3 earned runs in his starts, in his 5 starts this season, Actually, one wasn't a start. Sorry, he kind of got out there early, um, but in, in five starts. So, gives up the home run. He's given up uh, six home runs in his last four starts as well. So, he's got that coming for him. So, definitely looking at Arizona bats. I'm hoping Kettle Marte is back in there. He was available to pinch hit on Saturday, so I would assume that they're going to get him back in the lineup um, today. He didn't play yesterday, so he sat out there again yesterday as well. But, like Dyson Marte, Escobar Peralta is probably my favorite. One, two, three, four. Um, I will consider uh, Walker, who's probably going to be in the fifth spot, uh, Jake Lamb, Nick Ahmed as well as you go down, even Alex Avila in uh, in GPP. Down at the bottom of the lineup, he's got some power there. He's very cheap as well, so we'll be looking at that. Uh, the Twins versus Ivan Nova. We've been targeting against Nova all season. He has been, like, almost lights out lately. His last five starts, he's only given up two earned runs. So I, I think people may see that and may jump off of the Twins, um, kind of lean towards Houston and Arizona tonight. So, uh, even uh, Washington, who I don't have highlighted on here yet, but I'll definitely be looking at Washington. So I think Minnesota comes at a little bit lower on because of that. N N Nova's not, I mean, he doesn't, 5.42 Ks per nine, um, you know, he's not great in that sense. He doesn't give up a ton of fly balls, though, so he hasn't been giving up home runs. Only the two earned runs in that time were both by, you know, solo shots. So he's been very good, so I think people avoid him. So more of a GPP play, I guess, with Minnesota if you're loading up just because of the bats that are in great situations in other spots. I think, uh, you know, everyone's going to see that, and Minnesota's going to be lower on. Jorge Lopez we're going to want to target tonight. It's, it's too bad they're facing, or he's facing Baltimore. Um, Baltimore is better against lefties. It's kind of usually where I go with them. But he's been coming out of the pen, uh, back to Jorge Lopez, but coming out of the pen for the most part this season. He made a start in Detroit. This was, it would have been 11 days ago, it would have been his last appearance, uh, August 8th. And he only went in in the third. Only gave up two hits, but four and runs. There were some errors in there as well. Um, five runs, four earned, give up a home run, walk three. He's just not... A uh, great pitcher. He's coming in. He's walking over three and a half batters per nine. Um, almost at the strikeout per nine. So he does have some K upside there, but a 20% home run to fly ball rate. Giving up a lot of hard contact as well. And just going and looking at his splits, he has been absolutely terrible against left-handed bats. So if you're looking at Baltimore as some cheap fill-ins, if you know if you are going Houston 1, 2, 3, 4, you're going to need a cheap team to combine with them to make it all work. Baltimore is one of those teams I'll be looking at, like a Villar, Mancini, Santander, Nunez, um, even if you want to go cheap, cheaper, um, Jace Peterson. Like I said, you're going to be looking at some lefties, so I definitely like Santander, um, Jace Peterson, DJ Stewart could be a punt in there, uh, Chris Davis, GPP as well. And if you want to do, you know, wraparound stack, Rio, Rio Ruiz, um, the bottom three in Baltimore's projected lineup looks like they're all going to be lefties, so... Get the lefties in, especially against Lopez, but uh, Baltimore in general, I do like uh, Trey Mancini a lot. Is probably my top bat on Baltimore. And then I'll mix in, obviously, Villar is a switch hitter. I'll get him in, hitting from the left side tonight as well. 
And then I mentioned Washington as well, facing Trevor Williams. Um, his 5.12 xFIP is right there online with his ERA. So kind of he has been exactly what he has shown, I guess, this season. So 1.4 whip, not as bad as others, but still not good. He's given up almost 40% fly balls there as well. So uh, be looking at uh, Washington tonight as well. So that covers the stacks. If you have any questions leading up to lineup lock, make sure to get into the Roto Pros chat room with us and like i said if you're not a member get over to rotopros.com get your free trial come in see what we're all about um join the conversation ask some of the other members uh, they'll tell you exactly you know they'll be honest with you um we don't win every day no one does and i mean if you're telling people that you win every day you're you're probably not in a in a great spot as a business uh you know lying to people but uh what we pride ourselves on is really our research that we provide our customers um combined with our one-on-one -on -one I don't want to call it counseling, but coaching, I guess, is what we'll call it in our chat rooms uh, daily with people, whether it be in the member chat room, uh, whether it be in private messages as well. So we really uh, not just give you the picks that to use every night. We want to educate you on uh, bankroll management, on contest selection, which is huge, uh, GPP versus cash, how to, uh, what funds, how much of your funds nightly entries into cash and GPP. So Really big to get over at rotopros.com. Uh, thanks for checking out the video. I'll uh, be back with more. we got a week off here for NASCAR, so we will have a show again on uh, Friday morning going over that huge slate. Uh, if you've got any questions, make sure, like I said, get over to the chat room. Leave your comments below. Like and subscribe. Let's go get some green screens. Good luck, everyone.